Fun fact about me, I love everything that has to do with Disney. Disney movies are my go-to. Disney Plus was pretty much the best thing ever invented. I own an unusually large collection of Disney apparel for a woman in her 30s, and I am almost always listening to Disney music while I work. I also love incorporating Disney into my lessons. You can find another video here on this channel all about how to teach main idea with Disney songs. But in addition to all of those things, I also love Disney vacations. The problem is Disney can be expensive, especially for those of us living on an educator salary. So in this video, I am so excited to share with you all of the tips and tricks I have learned over the years to save money on a Walt Disney World vacation, especially if you are a teacher on a budget. So if you follow all of the tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you in this video, you can easily save well over a thousand dollars on your next Walt Disney World vacation. I am so excited to make this video for you today. I know we usually create videos here on the channel that have to do with teaching ideas and resources, but I think it's also great to share ways that teachers can save money while vacationing because vacationing is an important part of your mental health as a teacher. And I get phone calls and messages literally every single month from friends, family members, teacher friends, asking me how they can save money on a Walt Disney World vacation because they know how much I love it, they know how much time I spend researching how to go when you're on a budget. So I'm so excited to share all of these tips and tricks with you today. Now I'm gonna break this video down into three parts. We're gonna talk about hotels, we're gonna talk about park tickets, and we're gonna talk about food because these are three of the most costly areas when you are trying to plan your Walt Disney World vacation. So let's go ahead and start with hotels. Now, if you are looking to stay on property, Walt Disney World hotel pricing varies throughout the year based on the day of the week and demand. So as of the time of filming this video, Disney World currently has two of what's kind of referred to as value seasons. And those times of year are about mid-September to mid-October and mid-January to mid-February. These are the times of the year where it's going to be the cheapest for you to go. Now stay Staying at one of these times of years is not also going to save you the most money on your hotel, but it's also going to save you more money on your park tickets as well, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So if you have a fall break in September, October, that is probably going to be the best time of year for you to go. Now, the one time of year that I plead with teachers and family and friends, please do not go, is the week between Christmas and New Year's. I see so many teacher friends go during that time because that's when winter break is and I'm just like, no, whenever I see it because that is the most expensive week of the entire year at Disney World. It is not only the most expensive week, it's also the busiest week. So you are going to be paying the most amount of money and you're going to get to do the least amount of attractions and things because you're going to be spending a lot of time standing in line. Usually the Magic Kingdom maxes out at some point during that time between Christmas and New Year's, which means you can't even get into the Magic Kingdom anymore because it is so crowded. So I strongly recommend if you don't have a fall break, it's still going to be better for you to go during your spring break or summer vacation. Those times of year are still not the cheapest times to go, but they are still a lot cheaper than going that end of the year week. And the crowds are also a lot less during that time. So as far as timing goes, if you want to stay on property, that is going to be your best bet. And just to give you a little bit of idea of how much the price can vary between seasons, I have stayed at the All Star Movies Resorts, which is one of the cheapest resorts on Disney property, the last week of January, which is during that value season, and I paid about $84 per night. I had a friend stay at the exact same resort that week between Christmas and New Year's, and she paid over $200 and $50 per night. So you can see there is a huge difference in cost. 
Now, a lot of my teacher friends have asked me, are there any type of teacher discounts for staying on property? And at the time of filming this video, there is only one on property teacher discount, and that is at the Swan and Dolphin Resort. Now, keep in mind that even though this resort is on property, it's not actually owned by Disney. So you may not get that same Disney magic and experience there, but the resort is still very upscale, it's very fancy, and if you stay there, you're still going to end up paying several hundred dollars per night, so I usually do not recommend teachers taking advantage of that discount because it's not really an advantage. Now, if you listen to any piece of advice that I give in this video, this is the piece of advice to listen to. This is the biggest way that you can save money when taking a Walt Disney World vacation, and that is to stay off property. Now, two years ago, I never would have suggested this. I would have said, go ahead and pay the extra money because the perks that you get are so worth it. Disney used to offer two extra hours in the park every day, free transportation to and from the airport, free parking, free magic bands, free uh, luggage to and from the airport. So you didn't even have to stand in baggage claim and a whole lot of other perks to people staying on property. Recently, they have taken all of those things away. So there are very few perks to staying on property right now. So what that means is you're gonna be paying more money to stay in a smaller room compared to what you'll be paying and getting by staying off property. The last time I went to Disney, I stayed at a hotel off property. The hotel was brand new. It had just opened about four months before we went there. So everything was clean, sparkling, gorgeous. This hotel was less than a mile off Disney property and we were actually so close that we had a firework view of the Magic Kingdom from our room. So we were able to watch the Magic Kingdom fireworks every single night from our room. Now we had a studio suite, so it was a great big room with a bedroom, living room, full kitchen with appliances, great big bathroom, and we paid $140 less than what it cost to stay in a standard room on Disney property, two queen size beds, no firework view. So that's a huge savings, and we got a lot of extra amenities and that firework view, and we weren't that much further away compared to to where we would have been staying on property. Now the room itself was not the only place where we saved money. We also saved over $20 per day on parking because the hotel allowed free parking, whereas Disney hotels require about $20 per day for parking. The hotel that we stayed at also offered a free hot breakfast with waffles, eggs, muffins, fruit, biscuits and gravy, all kinds of things. And usually when my husband and I eat breakfast on property, we spend about $35 for the two of us to eat breakfast. So we also saved about $35 per day on breakfast. Now, after you add up the savings from the room, the parking, and the breakfast, we saved $1,345 by staying less than a mile off property for the week. And in addition to saving all that money, we had a firework view, a bigger room, and more amenities. Now you can find all types of similar situations like that if you just do a little bit of research and Google hotels just off Disney property, you can find some great values that like I said, that will save you anywhere from 100 to $200 per night, probably get you a bigger room, and then you can find amenities that your family would enjoy using. Now let's go ahead and talk about park tickets. Like I said, park tickets vary from day to day and time of the year. So going in the middle of the week is always going to be cheaper than going on a Friday or a weekend. The tickets are also cheaper during those value seasons compared to say that week between Christmas and New Year's. So usually you can go onto the Disney website and you can pull up a calendar that shows you how much tickets are each day of the week. 
At the time of filming this video, a one day adult park ticket can range anywhere from $116 to $170. And keep in mind that Disney does raise the price of park tickets every year. So that price may be different if you're watching this video a little bit later. But $116 to $170, that means if you're strategic about when you go, you can save up to $50 per day per ticket, which really adds up, especially if you are traveling with a lot of people. There usually aren't a whole lot of ways to get discounts on Disney park tickets unless you are a Florida resident or you have a member of your family that is in the military. If you are a Florida resident or you have a military family member, there's actually some pretty significant savings, but outside of that, any savings you do find are gonna be pretty minimal. For example, you sometimes can find discounted tickets at places like Sam's Club, Costco, or if you're a AAA member, but just keep in mind that any discounts are going to be pretty minimal. Now, if you have a Target red card, there is a trick that the Disney pros use to save money on Disney tickets and really anything else that you can buy on Disney property. Now, if you have that Target red card, you may be familiar that anything you buy with that red card, you get 5% off on at checkout. And you can actually use that 5% on Disney gift cards. You've probably seen in the gift card section or at checkout, there are Disney gift cards there. So a lot of times what people will do is they will figure out about how much their park tickets are gonna cost, if they're going to stay on property, about how much their rooms are gonna cost, then they'll go and buy Disney gift cards for that amount and use their Target red card to get 5% off. So that gives them a 5% savings. So that's a savings of about $50 for every $1,000 that you spend. Once again, this is just a minimal savings, but if you're a teacher on a budget, it's something that can really help. And keep in mind, you can also do this when you eat at any Disney owned restaurant on property or when you're buying merchandise on property. A lot of times we'll go and buy those gift cards for 5% off and then we'll take them with us to spend on food and merchandise. So there's another pro tip for you. Last, let's talk about food. And the first food tip I'm going to share with you is another huge money saver. So make sure you're listening up to this one. And that is go off property to buy your bottled water, any other bottled beverages and snacks. Remember food on Disney property is priced at a premium. You are going to pay significantly more for food and beverages on Disney property. And just to give you an idea of what I mean by that, at the time of filming this video, a bottle of water on Disney property is $3.50. And usually they raise the price of beverages a few cents every year. Usually what my husband and I will do at the start of our vacation is we will go off property to a market or a drugstore and we will pay $2.99 for an entire case of water. So yes, a case of water off Disney property costs less than one bottle of water on Disney property. And on the surface, 350 for a bottle of water may not sound like a lot, but think about this. If you get a bottle of water at lunch and dinner and then drink two bottles of water during the day, because keep in mind, Florida is hot. You will need to drink water during the day. You are going to spend $14 per day or $98 per week per person just on bottled water. And it's the same thing even if you decide to drink soda or something like that instead of water. Actually, things like Powerade are $5 a bottle on Disney property, so you'll spend even more if you choose things like that. So go off property, get your bottled water, get your bottled drinks. You can actually take those things into the park. Disney will even let you bring a cooler into the park. So then you can not only have those things to sip on throughout the day, but you can take them into quick service restaurants to have them with your meal. So that way you're not spending that 350 per bottle of water. Now keep in mind the same strategy can also be used when you are purchasing snacks. Snacks are also going to be significantly marked up on property. So if you wanna go off property to buy chips, granola bars, fruit, anything like that, it's going to be cheaper to go off property and bring it on. And it is something that will save you a lot of money over the course of a week. You can also implement this strategy when it comes to the meals themselves. 
once again, food on property is really expensive. Usually if my husband and I eat a quick service meal, we are going to spend about 30 to $40 for the two of us. And if we do a table service sit down meal, we're gonna spend anywhere from 60 to $100 for the two of us. So meals on Disney property are not cheap. But occasionally what we'll do is we'll go off property, we'll find a Chipotle or something that's just a few minutes from Walt Disney World and we can eat for about $20 for the two of us. So you can see that going off property can save you money. Walt Disney World does have some amazing food though, so I do recommend staying on property for some of your meals and enjoying some of the unique meal experiences that they have to offer. I especially love going to Disney World because as a person with a lot of food allergies, Disney is so accommodating. Any food allergy you have, they will accommodate you at just about any restaurant, whether it's a quick service or a table service on property. So that's a huge benefit if you or someone you're traveling with has food allergies. Now, if you want to eat on Disney property, remember your quick service options are going to be the cheapest options. But just because you're eating quick service, it does not mean that you have to eat park food like hamburgers, hot dogs, and pizza the whole time. Disney has quick service options that are unique and healthy as well. So I want to share a few of our favorites with you. One of my favorite places on all of Disney property is called Satuli Canteen, and that is in the Animal Kingdom theme park. My husband and I can can both eat there for about 30 to $35. So it is one of the cheaper places you will find on property. And they do bowls where you can either get rice, lo mein, potatoes, salad, and it's gonna come with grilled chicken or steak with some kind of slaw and sauce on top. It's one of the healthier options and it is so delicious. The next two quick service options I'm gonna share with you are actually both in Hollywood Studios and that is Docking Bay 7, which is in Galaxy's Edge or Star Wars Land, and then Woody's Lunchbox, which is in the Toy Story Land. Docking Bay 7 has some really unique options like ribs, pot roast. I like to get their meatless meatballs with hummus. Really great options there, and the prices are very reasonable. Woody's is not the healthiest, but they have some delicious food like grilled cheese sandwiches, tomato soup, tater tots, things that your kids are probably really going to enjoy. Another one of your cheaper options on Disney property can be found at Epcot, and that is the Regal Eagle Smokehouse. They're gonna have all kinds of barbecue options for you. And then over at Disney Springs, there's a place called Chicken Guy. This is probably the cheapest place that I found to eat on property. It's about $20 for both my husband and I to eat there. Now this is just going to be things like chicken fingers, chicken sandwiches, fries, milkshakes, things like that, but it is very good and it is cheap, especially if you have little kids and picky eaters. Last, when it comes to food, don't forget that Target red card tip that I shared with you. Go ahead and buy those Disney gift cards for 5% off and remember that you can use them at any Disney owned restaurant on property. The majority of restaurants on property you'll be able to use them at, but you'll just wanna check ahead of time to make sure that they're Disney owned so that you can use them there. So there you have it. Those are all my tips and tricks for saving money at Walt Disney World. Like I said, we usually save at least $1,000, usually a lot more than that, per trip just by following these tips that I've shared with you today. So I hope that you are able to take them and have a great vacation with your family. I really do believe that Walt Disney World is one of the most magical places on earth. Even as an adult, I love to go there and I want other people to be able to experience it too. But I'd also love to hear from you. I love brainstorming and strategizing my Disney vacations with others. So if you know a great way to save money, go ahead and comment down below. I will definitely be reading through those and looking for other ways that I can save money too. So until next time, happy teaching and have a magical day. Thank you.